Hello, how are you? Oh, I'm fine, thanks. <laughs> uh, Patricia? Yes, and you're Islam? Yeah. It is very nice to meet you. It's nice. Where, to meet you. <laughs> <laughs> Where are you? Uh, right now, I'm in Kuwait. Okay, you're in Kuwait. Okay, okay. What time is it there? Uh, it's 10 p.m. 10 p.m.? Okay. okay. Um, it's, it's still two. early here in Mexico. I'm in you Mexico. Are, you are now in Mexico. <laughs> yes, I, um, in, I live in Puerto Vallarta, Mexico. I'm mm. from San Francisco, California, in the United States. Yeah, right uh, now I'm in tourism in front of my of me. Yeah, I know. I, as I'm reading about you too, I'm like, oh, okay, who's this? It's really interesting that you have an especially hired flight attendant. Yes, yes. I was a flight attendant for 27 years. And wow. yeah, well, I, some of it I was at the airport as a customer service agent. So, been I'm sorry, you, you cut out on that one. I'm hey. sorry. I'm sorry, hold on a second. I can't, you're, you're kind of breaking up there. Do you have no, a I microphone? Okay, yeah. okay, there you go. So, oh. I, yes. I did not hear what you just, you last said. I'm so sorry. It, it kind of, it was, you know, those, what we call warbles where you go, well, and you come back. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Maybe the okay. connection is natural. Yes. Yes. Okay. So yeah. I see, I was reading about you. Have you traveled? Do you travel? Not exactly. Just traveling mm -hmm. Egypt itself. Okay. When I go back, I, I sometimes I go to different places. Okay. All right. So, Egypt. what do you, are you working? Are you working in Kuwait? Yeah. Can you hear? Me? Okay. Okay. But okay. But you are. Where are you from? I'm from Egypt. Okay. Okay. All right. Now I'm, I'm, I'm starting. I'm sorry. It's a little warbly, the connection, but I'm, I'm picking this up. I'm getting there slowly, okay. but sure. Okay. So okay. I was just trying to see what, how you wanted to uh, go about your lesson today. And I'm reading, you want to improve your English YouTube. To, uh, okay. YouTube. Okay. Very good, very good. Okay, so why are you, why do you want to learn English? What, what, because some people, you know, business, some people do it for fun because they like the conversation. Some people like to learn languages. Just to be better in my profession, I teach English, actually. <laughs> oh, okay, now I'm starting to sweat here. Okay, now I'm getting nervous. Okay, wow. Okay, so you teach English, and so this kind of keeps you in practice. Is that correct? Yeah, just okay. being, just being. Let's see. I'm seeking to be perfect in the language itself. Okay. So you you want to perfect the language or per yeah. Okay. As much as I can, meeting okay. new people okay. like you, Patricia. Learning other cultures, uh, let's say, getting new ideas from your own experience, adding to yeah. mine. I could help my students by some stories I could tell about people okay. I had met before. Uh, not in their real life, in their own one would be yes. great. Yeah. Stories to tell. Okay. Okay. I know. Actually, even sometimes I even give bonus slang. I give bonus slang language. <laughs> if we get into the conversation so much, I give people slang. I mean, I'm like, okay, you're this, what they call you in the United States, a cultural something that they say. And I said, that's what this is in slang in the United States. So you that's get great. a little. <laughs> I'm honored to 
as, as a slang I language. Should, it's like I should put that in the um, I should put that in my profile. I give bonus slang lessons. Um, <laughs> it's really okay. different. It is very different. I know, right? Um, speaking of languages and slang, I, I can I share a little story with you? I want your opinion on this. Since you are an English teacher, okay? And this is, has to do with the English language, okay? Let's see. <clears throat> okay, here we go. Oh, in, yes. All right. In Oakland, California, okay, it is a predominantly, at that time, a predominantly black area where it was of urban culture. So it was the majority of these people lived in these communities, and they formed pretty much their own language. Okay. okay, so and I'm sure you've watched movies where you hear a, a black person or some people like to say African-American person using slang, what we call slang or cussing and using certain terminologies to define things. They're changing the terminology or the definitions. OK, now right. these you know, are you getting right? You get where I'm going there, right here. OK, so these people form these communities and they form their own language. It's their own language because they pretty much are, they stick to their own group. They don't go outside. They just stay in their general areas. Okay. So now they are raising forming a cult. <laughs> not a cult, not a cult. This is okay. But I'm going there. I know I'm, I'm getting there. This is, I'm just saying, but let me, I'll, 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 I'll well, cause I, I do want your opinion on that. And that's interesting. You said that it's interesting. You said that. Um, okay. So now these children, they bring up the children and the children are basically exposed to only this language because yeah. they're at home. Okay. They don't have daycare is not affordable because it's a low income area. So they have to stay at home with their moms or their cousins or their sisters. So they're always within this group. So they do not get a chance to learn English in a business sense in America. Mm. Do you understand what I'm saying? Because they're yeah. in these communities, so they're they're exposed in their homes with their families, just learning from them. No outside experience. They are not getting what the standards of the English, the simple way of English or business English, as you are saying. That's what exactly. you are saying. Exactly. Yes, this is it. Okay, so now, now we have these children that have to get integrated into public schools. Okay, mm -hmm. you have to integrate them because they have. It's, it's a law in the United States. You have to put children; they have to be in school, or people can actually be fined or be imprisoned if they do not have their children in school. Okay, okay. it's a requirement. Okay, so unless you're homeschooling and but then you're still filling that requirement of them getting an education okay oh, yeah. so it's already a must that everyone is obligated to teach his son and getting them go to the school exactly so we do have homeschooling a lot of homeschooling in the united states but mm. now these kids these kids are low income so their parents do not have college degrees to give their children an education right okay. because it's a low income area so now these children have to go to public school and keep up with children who have had access to preschool, to pre-kindergarten. They've had access to um, a business language because their parents were probably in business. And so they've grown up in an environment where they've been surrounded with the correct English language, okay? So now they have a problem. Now they have a problem because they cannot, it's almost like teaching as a second language, okay? It's like teaching children that are from Mexico that speak Spanish, integrating them into the United States system and teaching them English at the same time. Do you get what I'm saying? Okay. So uh, these, these people that you are telling uh -huh. me are not already yeah. in America, they are in Mexico. No, they're already in they're already in America. They're in America. They live in America. They're Americans. But I'm giving you an example. It's an example. I'm sorry, Islam. I'm giving you an example. Okay. It's like integrating learning, teaching children as a second language, integrating like children from Mexico, 
bringing them to the United States and putting them in the school system when they only know Spanish. Okay, so this is what the, they face, but they don't know the language of these children that are in these neighborhoods because they're only within their uh, general area. Get what I'm, okay, you get what I'm saying? So this is- I guess It's not a big problem because children could learn fast. Yes, they can, but they still have a problem, but the teachers cannot communicate with them because they don't know the slang language that was used in their neighborhoods and in their homes. But uh, I guess, okay, teachers are not that smart enough to, let's say, not smart. <laughs> <laughs> have them. <laughs> you said it. <laughs> 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 that those get had gain, had gained before, but yeah. still, still that kids are, let's say, smarter than us. Yes, yes. This okay. is true, and they can yeah. communicate with us in the way that they would like. Yes. Okay. Children can see us very well. They when yes. you enter for uh, for your learners. Each learner see you by his own eye, not by what you impose on them. You know? This is true. This is true. true. It, it, this is true. They, the only thing is that they came across a problem with trying to translate what these children were trying to say to them. It's not like these people spoke Spanish where you have some Spanish people right outside that can go in there and know exactly what this kid is saying and translate it it's into English for them, right? It's because they created their own, yeah, because they created their own language that no one can interpret except them, okay? So now this is where they came up with Ebonics. <laughs> Ebon well, have you ever heard of Ebonics? Seriously, no, Ebonics. Could you type it? Uh, I'm typing could... it right now. I'm hoping my text works. Come on. Let me try it again. It's okay. Ah, yeah, it, it's okay. I know, and you're going to laugh because it is based upon African-American slang. It yeah. exists. It does exist. Yes, I met actually some of the authors of it. Uh, they actually, one of them taught me sociology. Actually, I'm from Africa, but I guess I'm not, I'm not aware of what you're going to type right well, now. Well, this is Africa. This is different. This is African American. This is different. Yeah. There's a big difference. Big. There isn't, but there is. Well, we actually, African Americans, actually, we had to create our own culture because we were stolen from ours. So yeah. we had to create our own culture. So this is our culture we created. It's called Ebonics. And I can't, if I can get this thing to work, I will keep working on that. But it's called Ebonics. And it's based on the slang that they use on the streets in urban in urban cities in the United States. Yeah. Okay, basically. I'm aware of it. Yeah. So but let I, me give you an example. Slang yeah. language is, uh, is not, let's say, is not available for us to be taught because there's no book. There's no exactly. No. <laughs> Nobody knows. Yes. <laughs> okay. So how can you get a child to learn? a language that you cannot find their original to find the correct translations for, because you, you don't know, you don't know. It's the only people who know is their family and their friends. Okay. So you, but you still have to integrate these children into society to go with others. Okay. So they created Ebonics. Okay. Where there are certain words, and I will give you, let me just give you the basic greeting. This is, this is the easiest way I can explain this. Don't okay. Hmm? Don't I'm sorry? Don't tell me that you are one of those. No, 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 no. One of what? One, one of, of what? those who has been created this language, this culture. No, I didn't. No, 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 no. I'm just, no, 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 no. No, no, I speak English, but I mean, you know, there are things when you're with your friends, you kind of shuck and jive and, you know, joke around. Yeah, but that. business is business. Yeah, business is business, my friend. I would, I just thought this story was really interesting and I wanted to share it with you. Uh, yeah, it's really Okay, no, but the Ebonics, I'll just, I'm almost finished with it, but basically what it was, okay, let's say 
you have to tell teach a child the basic greeting. Hello, how are you? Okay. Okay. Now to them, Ebonics would be, yo, what's up? Okay, I already know this. <laughs> uh, yeah, this is what that, no, but it was an actual, they actually created a language of Ebonics. It's actually you know, been created. You have remind me uh, of a friend of mine, a tutor too in Cambly, he is from Britain, uh, from uh, Cambrian. And they have uh, their own uh, language there in Britain. Uh, it's specific. What? Yeah. Uh, it's, uh, he taught me some kind of slang language too. And it's really interesting okay. that you have evolved this point. Uh, are you okay, dude? It's not like that. It's called Yuritmara. Yuritmara. Okay. So, I understand Yuritmara, but people in Cambrian, in Britain, could understand this very clearly. When you say you read Mara, so it means, are you okay, dude? And he's telling me, people from Lango doesn't, don't understand this language too. Okay, okay, wow. It's half, so, it's yeah, like, I know, right? This links yeah. together. <laughs> oh, there was so much, you know, I'm even learning, okay, I'm living in Mexico now, so now I have to learn Spanish. Mm. And, and I'm learning that, the Spanish here in Mexico is very different from the Spanish in Spain. Of course, yeah. Based upon the Indian tribes here in Mexico, it's it's interesting how people think that because they're Mexican that they will they look Spanish or that they're Spanish. They're not Spanish. They were actually no, their land was taken over by the Spanish. So they're actually Native American. They're actually Native Americans if you really you know, look at it. They're Native Americans. Speaking Spanish. Yes, but they were, they were forced to speak Spanish, right? They were forced to speak Spanish. So, but they still have their own cultural and tribal languages that they still practice. And so they have a slang as well. It is based, you could speak Spanish to them and they would be fine and fluent with it. It would be a little different because they have words that are based upon their culture and things that are a part of it for, I mean, like I said, they're the original people on this land. So mm -hmm. their culture is based upon their original languages as well. I put S on it because there's, there's quite a few tribes here. So, and you can start to tell them apart too, as you live here, it's interesting. It's really interesting. Yeah. I, yeah. I, love, I love the way how, how you said all this story. You, you have built it nicely and smoothly. Yeah, I got it quite easily. <laughs> I know, but I just, that whole Ebonics thing, that caused the biggest uproar because they thought that we were trying to, like you said, oh, you're not one of those people who are trying to change a language or anything like that. <laughs> you're not. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I got you on that one. No, but it's, no, I'm not. I just thought it was very interesting that really they good. would create something like that. And I, like I said, I was very fortunate enough to be, um, I was able to take a class in sociology from one of the gentlemen that created this language. Oh. Yeah, in Oakland, California. So, and he even did a really good book on the Black Panthers. So, yeah, yeah, he, he was, it. I did, I did my sociology in the, in the best place I think in, I think was Oakland, California is where I did my sociology lessons. And wow, sitting in the room with college, with other students that are 19, 20, and they are living in those inner city schools and having them talk about guns and talking about violence. And they come into this classroom and the teacher, yes, he could go over the book over and over again but, but he does not do that. No, he he brings up current events that gets the yeah. Get on with them, yeah. Exactly. You, know, you have reminded me of another story. It happened with me personally. Uh, okay. Let's say two years ago, maybe or three, uh, while I was st still outside of the school, one of the fathers of one of the let's say parents. Uh, came and shake hand with me and said, Mr. Islam, you know, you are a great teacher. You have, you still, till today, have your own, let's say, print on my son. 
you have touched him from inside uh, with okay. your interesting topics everything he is on right now some kind of based on what you have told him that or these days yeah. what you have been teaching him mm -hmm. now he is in different grade yeah but he still remembers you he still oh, yeah. it's really amazing that he that you have touched him that good you know that well yeah you touched him that well yeah it's amazing be up to date with your students the the new games the new movies they are seeking the new culture new words they are and you have yes. to give them to tell you what they have got because we have here a gap we are talking yeah. about uh, let's say 15 years ago may, uh, sometimes it could be 20 years ago between you and your students so wow god man you have to listen to them because they have let's say they have access to many things that you couldn't do by that you can't do by yourself you know no no you no you couldn't they, they uh, like i said the what is that saying the teacher is never above the student no. the stu is that Actually, what it is the student is never above the teacher so this it's basically where the student can teach the teacher is what i'm trying I, to say you know last week i have told my students this I'm, I'm not just the only one who is teaching you here. I can learn from you too. Yes, yes, yes. Whoa. So that's that's the saying. The teacher is never above the student. I, actually, I didn't hear. I didn't know before. Uh, two famous games. Just I have heard about them from my students. PUBG and Fortnite. Okay. They are online games like war, stuff like this, and okay. they get. You know, and, chatting while we while they are playing the game so yes yeah. <laughs> and okay i went home and i downloaded the game i played it tomorrow wow i do play babji i kill people i can do it. wow <laughs> what's your account name and they i i play the game online with them too yeah was it yes, yes. sharing yes. things with your students really lifts a good uh, effect on them and you are Getting on it with your, I wish my translator, there it is, it lifts your spirits. Yeah, it's really amazing. It lifts your spirits. Yeah, it does. And, you know, it does. It does. I, I just from teaching Cambly, I know exactly what you're saying. Actually, so, I, love, I love helping people. Okay. How many are in your class? How many children? Uh, let's say between 22 to 25. Okay. Okay. And what 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 tools do you like to use the best when you teach? I'm just curious now because I'm going to pick your brain. Actually, I I let's say I focus on oral one. I, okay. I focus yes. on helping them to speak the language because yes. the product of the language is speaking and communicating easily. Make you make other partners hear you well, understand you, yeah. you are saying, and at the same time could speak with you, could communicate with you easily. I'm helping them yeah. to get ideas in their mind uh, smoothly, without yeah. feeling or feeling shy that I could make, I could do mistake or make mistakes. No, it's okay. Even me as a teacher, yeah. I get mistakes. It's okay, but you are not going yeah. to be perfect. We're not going to learn to be better without trying to be better. No? Can't be better, yeah. Yeah, no, it's true. And to be good. You, you can't yeah. be great between day and night. So I'm, yeah. I'm focusing on speaking. Of course, simple tools as usual. Pens, books, homework, assignments, board. Yeah, all that boring. Sure. Yeah, yeah. Everything is acceptable or could be used, but I'm... Uh, I want to focus with here, especially we have, we have, or I have, Arabian, Arabian learners. So, okay. they, let's say, a parallel between the language, Arabic language and English language. Mm -hmm. Why are learning English? We don't need English. Actually, you need it. You do. Everything around, around you right now is in English. Even mm -hmm. the device playing on, it's in English. 
the game, yes. your car, TV, smart TVs, computer, everything in English. So you, you need yeah. to use it. Yes, you do. Yeah, no, so, I was wondering about that. Yeah. Okay. So you mentioned that um, English is all around you and that your children are... Um, Okay, so I, I'm because I'm curious about the learning because I do get children from from you know from Kuwait, and I get a lot of children from the Middle East, like you were saying, Arab children, and to, they're speaking the difference of the language. Is Ooh. it um, what is it difficult? I mean, is there is is it is there a difficulty teaching it to them, or or is it actually it's so easy, but learners here let's say they don't have the uh, it's not kind of foundations it's kind of lack of vocabulary they don't have enough vocabulary to build a conversation between them and other partners you know okay okay i get what you're saying because i'm i was just thinking wait i was just thinking about that because i had a student and I, it was like pulling teeth to get them to say, to have, a, well, do you, do you have fun? Do you have any, you know? And then you, you're trying to pull out the interest and well, you have to, so it's what, it's, I didn't know what to have a conversation with because they didn't have very many likes or. Actually, Cambly is not for beginners. Cambly, okay. for, Cambly is for, Learners who will, who already have the basics of the language, yeah, yeah. Some, yeah knowing your grammar rules have uh, let's say more than two thousand words or vocabulary, so he can build a conversation. Now he can move to another step, speaking fluently. I guess yeah. this is in my own opinion. After, let's say uh, I'm a tutor, but I'm a, I'm a teacher, so I. It's not tough speaking the language for me because I have practiced a lot before. But now, okay. others might, uh, let's say, it's really tough to express this. <laughs> because I didn't you bust. Don't say lazy. You don't want to say lazy. You don't want to say lazy, but... No, no, um, no. Or just no, they, they don't want to learn it? Is it they don't want to learn or is it... They, they won't learn, but they struggle to learn because... They, they miss what they need. No one is here to orient them, to, to direct them, to show them the way to reach it. Uh, okay. The problem is that they want to learn the language just in a week, two weeks. Instant gratification. Yeah. They want instant gratification. They don't want to practice. They won't don't want to read their text over and I know they're that's what I call them lazy. <laughs> <laughs> what I said originally. <laughs> no, no, I, I'm dealing with kids here myself, my nieces and nephews. I can't yeah. believe that they're still my sisters are still paying their bills. I'm like, these are grown children. Why are you paying their bills? You know, I mean, our parents kicked us out at 18. Bye. <laughs> Can I upload this episode on YouTube? Yes, <laughs> sure. Why not? <laughs> Schedule something else with me soon. I'd like to talk to you again. And we'll have time to talk about. You take care.